Sonic Movie Averse Book 1, Be All Right Chapter 2 Miles fled, running as fast as he could while dodging trees left and right. He tried flying, but one twitch of his tail kept him grounded with a pain yelp, so he held on tightly to the bleeding appendage, hoping he wasn't leading anybody right to him, and ran without looking back. One root made him trip and fall flat on his belly. He frantically looked around him for fear of it being another trap, ignoring the newborn pain, but he almost immediately spotted a familiar hole in the ground leading to the cave. He hastily crawled to it with heavy breath and peeked inside. He noted that it wasn't too deep that he wouldn't be able to land painlessly without his tails. And so he jumped in, only slightly staggering as he landed on the ground of the cave. Miles quickly scrambled out of sight from the hole and sat down, leaning against the wall. He glanced around the mini-cave while recovering his breath. He'd inspected it a few hours ago during his first visit, but he hadn't taken the time to really see it. Miles took the ring out of his pouch. Even if he wanted to take a closer look at the cave, he knew he wouldn't be safe for long. However, it was the only ring he had, and he couldn't go back without Sonic the Hedgehog. The fox eyes grew heavy. He had realized that he'd been running on adrenaline for a long time, but he felt the exhaustion creeping in. While he knew it was risky, he could no longer fight the fatigue, and he curled up in a ball, ignoring the danger in favor of sleep. In less time than one could say Robotnik, he'd found his way to his old cave. Knowing he was much faster than the fox, his plan was to hide he did have a knack for hiding, and wait for the fox to get there before cornering and questioning him. Sonic knew he was right. No sooner than he got there, however, he heard rustling from behind him, a quick glimpse, and he caught sight of the fox already barreling his way towards him. His heart skipped a beat as he zipped on top of a tree which would allow him to see the fox from a safe distance while hiding in plain sight. Yee, the kid sure was fast. How'd he run so quickly? Sonic had been lucky. The fox hadn't seemed to notice him. He winced in sympathy as the younger boy tripped and fell face first. He knew from first and experience how unknowing that protruding root was. Sonic monitored the fox actions with keen interest as the boy readily jumped in his old cave's opening. A few minutes passed, and there were no signs of further movement. The hedgehog remained on guard. What if the kid in fact had noticed him and was luring him into a trap? If so, maybe it wasn't a wise move to confront him in the cave. Even if Sonic felt like he had the upper hand after all, he knew this forest like the back of his hand by now. He waited for a few more incenses, just to be on the safer side, before getting down from the tree. He ventured as close to the hole as he dared to and listened in, nothing. He peeked inside, but he knew that one part of the cave extended far enough that anyone would be well hidden if they didn't know to look better. He knew better, he jumped him. Mindful of any sound he'd make when landing, he was met with an adorable sight. The kit was curled up in a ball, clutching his injured tail in his sleep while the other acted as a pillow for his head. He looked even smaller, younger that way, and yet his face wore a nigh permanent frown. Sonic's frown mirrored the younger boys. Just who was he? Why was he here? The hedgehog needed answers, and so he waited, and waited, and waited. Boy, did he hate waiting. Waiting was probably the one thing he hated the most. Actually, that's being alone. He thought to himself, just barely catching himself from speaking out loud. But now's my chance to get those answers. And so, he resigned himself to a fate of boredom while the kid slept. Clearly, he needed a nap. Sonic waited for a few minutes before noticing that it was slowly getting darker. He groaned. Great, it's getting dark outside and I don't have any light on me. The ball of fur in front of him suddenly shifted. He froze. It silt. Sonic kept his eyes trained on the fox. If he tried to escape, he'd be ready. Then the fox ears twitch, and he slowly rose from his slumber with a soft groan. Blue eyes met with green again. The fox cried out in shock, which made Sonic cry out in surprise. Both scrambled as far away from the other as possible. 
The younger boy saw his chance and took flight. Sonic braced himself to catch the fox, but the sight of him actually flying left him speechless and sure to his spot. That is, until the fox was in pain and crumbled in a heap on the ground. Sonic ignored his judgment to stay at a safe distance away and rushed to the injured kit, who lifted a hand in an effort to keep the hedgehog at bay. Stay away! The hedgehog skidded to a stop a couple of feet away, incredulous. But you're hurt. Yeah, don't remind me! The fox mumbled, dejected. Just stay away! Neither of the two made a move or a sound, until... And you could fly? The kit pressed his ears against his head. No, no, I'm... Awesome. We, we freak! Wait, what? The two uttered at the same time. They stared at each other. The fox spoke up. I was gonna say I'm a freak. What did you say? You're not a freak. I said you're awesome. Sonic replied, offering a grin. It appeased the younger boy. Oh, really? That. The hedgehog nodded. Is that why you're so fast? Well, I guess it helps. Wait, how did you know? I saw you get here. Barely had time to hide before you caught up with me. Wow! The fox bashfully exclaimed. I didn't even see you. He smiled shyly in return. We didn't meet like I helped, but... Yes, about that! Sonic interrupted, sobering up. <laughs> Who are you and why are you here? How did you get here? The fox closed his eyes with a sigh. He knew this part wouldn't be easy. But he'd expected the hedgehog to have tons of rations. I guess now's as good a time as any. He answered, Solon. I was, a few days ago. I detected an energy surge that led me here. It didn't uh, take me long to realize it was yours. I came looking for you because Mobius is in danger, and you're the only one who can help. Wait, so let me straight. Sonic paced while the fox sat leaning against the walls of the cave. Ever since I disappeared, the Ikshino clan, the one who wanted me for my powers, has been looking for me because their giant jewel dulled down, and they think I can restore it. I mean... Miles nodded. Sounds about right. Uh-huh. And that glowing rock is supposedly what's keeping the world from dying. Yeah. Right, okay. And they've been terrorizing everyone with their temper tantrums because they're mad and you barely escaped them to find me. Well, they're a little worse than tantrums, but you get the idea. And you want to take me back? I know. It sounds really bad, but... It does sound really bad, Miles. The hedgehog snapped, making the younger boy recall Sonic's side. Look, I get that you want to save the world or whatever, and you think I'm your only hope, but I can, okay? I've built a life here, and I'm finally safe. I don't have to run anymore. I wouldn't exchange that for the world. Miles glored. I never took you to be so selfish. Miles glored. Excuse me? You heard me millions of Mobians are gonna do, and all you care about is this stupid place. That stopped being my problem when I was hunted down and kicked away. These people accept me here, and I'll never give it up. So you'll just let a whole world be the only place that I've ever known a place you were born in. This is my world now. This is where I'm safe. If I go back, I might as well be a dead hog. Huh? Before Miles could utter another word, the hedgehog kept going. And you, from what you've literally just told me, it doesn't sound any safer there for you. You're just as good as dead. I don't hear about that. Sonic shut his mouth. The fox glared at him, panting. I don't care where I end up as long as I save my world. People are counting on me. I have to save them. I have to save Lunklaw.
The fox got himself off mid-sentence once he noticed the coldness in the hedgehog's eyes. Long Claw's dead. Sonic spat, curling his fists. The Echidna clan killed her after she sent me away. She died protecting me. She survived. The fox retaliated, his resolve shaking. She, she raised me. She kept me hidden from the Echidna. She! Then why did she never come back for me? Miles gasped, trying to press himself further against the wall behind him. The hedgehog took a step forward, and then another, fist clenched. Why did she never look for me? Did she think I was dead? Uh, she must have, cause I was just a kid. I spent my entire life hiding from people, only because she pushed me away. Why didn't she ever check up on me? I don't know, Sonic! Miles wailed, tears streaming down his face. I don't, I don't know why she didn't check up on you. The team took another step forward with a growl. Then what did she ever do for you? Huh? Kept you hidden away too? No friends, no freedom, no life. And let me guess, you were discovered and she sent you away too. Please, Sonic, hear me out. Miles whimpered, holding his hands in front of him as a means of protection. When the hedgehog stopped moving and talking, he slowly lowered them and made eye contact. I didn't know much about you. At first, she just told me she used to watch over someone. Someone special. And I was an orphan. She only told me about you about a year ago, I swear. I went against her to find you. She wanted to keep you and I away from all of this. I have put her in danger. And now they've got her and I barely escaped my life. And if I go back, I'll definitely die. But now I've definitely put you in danger too, in it. And it's all my fault. While the fox sobbed, Sonic took deep breaths, listened carefully, and unclenched his sore fists. Miles. He sighed. I'll ask with you. I'm mad. I really, really want to be mad at you. That long claw. And I don't want to go back. I really don't. The fox still wept, but Sonic could tell he had his attention. But no one of this... And I mean, none of this is your fault. When I still lived there, I noticed things. The grass didn't seem as green as it used to be. The sky is bright. The paths I ran on would crumble and disappear. I've tried not to think too much about Mobius, but I think whatever happened, happened before I got here. Maybe. Maybe they wanted my help. Maybe they were just as desperate as, as Longclaw was to protect me. They had a bad way of showing it, but maybe they're just as scared as I was. By then, Sonic was right in front of the fox. He kneeled down and gently rested his hand on Miles' shoulder. The fox flinched with a poor attempt to conceal it, but the hedgehog understood and didn't let on. And I know that you're scared too. I know that running is all you have ever known to get that. I really do. He sighed. I'm not sure how much help I'll be. I don't really understand my powers yet. I know that maybe you don't have a lot of time, but I need as much time as I can get if I want to help you. Okay. Miles rubbed the tears away from his eyes. You will do that. You really help. The hedgehog offered a small smile in an attempt to conceal his growing anxiety. Yeah, I guess I will. I just need a bit of time. He sobered up when he noticed the fox arms twitch around his injured tail. You're still hurt. We have to get you patched up first. The younger boy sniffled. But it's dark out. I don't want to see any else. Hey. Sonic softly interrupted. Remember the guy who held the trap open for you to get out? He's a good guy, I promise. Besides... Nobody will see us in the dark, and I know these woods really well. Are you sure? The fox uitly asked. I couldn't be sure. You think they'll be scared of me? The hedgehog chuckled. Don't you think they'd be scared of me too? Yeah, they took me in miles. 
They were the first humans to accept me for who I am. They won't think any less of you, too. Miles nodded, giving the Tina shy smile. Oh, okay, then. Tell you what. Sonic started, giving the fox a hand at getting up. He hoisted the fox with a quiet grunt before steadying the both of them. My friends will take care of you, and in turn, we'll stay here until you're fully healed. We'll leave after that. Miles considered for a moment and nodded again. Sounds like a plan to me, Sonic! Sonic raised his hand in a high-five motion with a grin. The kid just stared at him, head tilted to the side. Sonic grabbed the kid's wrist and tapped their hands together. This is a high five, it's what friends do when they're excited about something. He explained, the fox blinked, tapping Sonic's hand again. Friends. He asked, hopeful. Absolutely, I could use a moaning friend and so could you. What do you say, Tails? Tails! Now hold on tight. Hey, yeep! Tom thought he'd heard it all by now. At least, he knew the telltale sign of Sonic running. He could hear it from miles away. What he had been prepared to hear along with the running, however, was a childish. <laughs> the hedgehog skidded to a stop a few feet away from where Tom stood. Holding a familiar fox in his arms, the kid's fur was all fluffed out and his eyes were wide, chest rising and falling sporadically with his heavy breaths. He refused to let go of the hedgehog, even after Sonic had sold. You can't let go now. Sonic chuckled, gently prying the fox away from him. Miles tentatively pressed a foot on the ground, and then another. As soon as he was standing, he wheeled around to face the hedgehog completely ignoring the man who was staring at the pair with interest. What was that? He hissed. Running? Sonic replied with a cheeky grin and a thumbs up, the fox eye twitch, followed by his ear. Want a fox next time? He huffed, inhaling shakily and exhaling deeply, the corner of his mouth twitched, betraying his emotions. That was fast! Well, yeah, that's what I'm all about. Sonic replied, tapping his foot against the ground. I'm surprised nobody's heard that scream. Tom remarked with a chuckle, making both boys turn to him. Miles immediately blushed and curled on himself, disliking the attention brought on him. A hand on his shoulder made him flinch, but he realized it was Sonic's, and calmed down. This is Tom. Sonic introduced, gesturing to the human in front of him, said human offered a warm smile, but stayed in his spot for fear of scaring the kit. And this is Tails. Mouse, actually. The fox bashfully corrected, rubbing the back of his head while glowering at the hedgehog. Still, he remained rooted to his spot as well, feeling the anxiety creep in at meeting someone from an alien planet, especially someone who easily towered over him. Almost how we get to pass up. The man kindly suggested, It tell my silver. The fox, upon hearing those words, glanced sheepishly at his injured tail. Um, yeah! He admitted, holding onto it shy. Hey Tom, who's our new friend? A female voice called out, and a female human walked out the front door toward the group. Oh, hello. She cooed, smiling brightly at the newcomer. Miles instantly felt, appeased. There was this presence about her that screamed friendliness and comfort. Hey! He muttered taking a small step toward her, followed by Sonic, who guided the kit. I'm Maddie. The woman introduced with a warm smile. Miles thought that she and the man fit nicely together before his fleeting thought was interrupted by her closer presence. Follow me to look at your tail. He hesitated for a bit before resigning himself to his fate, 
and he nodded, revealing his tail. When she saw the injured appendage, she quietly gasped, ignoring the fact that the fox had, in fact, two tails. You poor thing, follow me inside. I'll get that patched up in no time. Her tongue left no space to argue, and so Mize shot one last look at the hedgehog before following the woman inside the house, clutching his tails for comfort. Meanwhile, Sonic kicked back with Tom as they both sat on the stairs. You did good, buddy. The man said, patting the teen on the back. Sonic giggled and affectionately punched the man on his shoulder. Of. Tom exclaimed. You're getting strong, every you kid. The two laughed, playfully slapping each other's arms before the man sobered up, watching Sonic carefully. Okay, kid, out of bed. Oh, what do you mean? Sonic, you know what I mean? Tom interrupted, though not unkindly. With the fox, what's the station here? Oh. Sonic realized, sharply inhaling. Yeah, about that. I'm going back. Whatever Tom had expected, it wasn't that. Wait, what, you're going back to your home planet, buddy? I don't want to go back. Sonic declared. This whole thing is really scary, I mean. The kid tracks me here and says my his world's in trouble, and he thinks I'm the only one who can save it. It's a lot of pressure. You don't have to do anything you don't want to know that bad. Tom Sooth, the hedgehog slowly nodded. I know, but I found out that my old caretaker is, well, still alive. And as much as I want to hate her for leaving me, I feel like I need to save her, you know. Like you wanted to save the fox. Tom remarked. Sonic glanced at the man, surprised. You have a good heart, kid. It's a little painful to see you now, but I understand what it's like. A desire to help everyone, especially someone in a life or death situation. I'll be back. Sonic vowed, staring intently at Tom, his first friend. This world is important to me, too. This place, this family. Tom smiled knowingly. I feel a Sonic. He wrapped an arm around the hedgehog and pulled him to his side. Sonic Siphon, not expecting the gesture, but soon, he relaxed into the man's embrace. The two of them stared out into the pitch black woods in comfortable silence. The night has truly set in, their faces illuminated by the grudge light. Sonic. Tom broke the silence, making sure to maintain eye contact with his young friend. Are you sure you'll be fine out there on your own? Of course. Sonic nodded, his resolve slightly wavering. Still, he didn't let Tom know about his worries. We'll be all right. 